This episode is brought to you by Prime Video Series The Lake. With plenty of sharp wit and devious sibling rivalry, The Lake follows Justin and Billy, an unconventional father-daughter pair, as they spend the summer reconnecting. But things, well, they're not going so well, until they pair up to take down Justin's irritatingly perfect stepsister and save the family cottage from her clutches. And along the way, they just might learn what it means to be a family again. Watch The Lake June 17th, only on Prime Video. Age of Radio. Hey guys, it's it's really great to be back. Um, you know, I hadn't heard from you over the the holidays, but this is this is great. I was I was I just wanted to say, like, you're not bringing me back just because I was on Star Wars, are you? Uh, what? what? Uh, no, Galen. Galen. What? No, you you are friend of the podcast. You were That's here long long before you were on Star Wars. You're always welcome here, mm-hmm. and it's it's just gonna be about whatever terrible movie we're talking about they, right. all well, that, yeah, the experts know, but, of course yeah but i mean you know since since you brought it up um did you did you get to did you get to meet ming na is she cool i mean oh yeah it, it, guys guys can we i i get it but can we can we get back can we just focus on the movie okay no, all right that's fair that's fair that's fair yeah, 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 yeah. we'll focus we'll focus on the movie the yeah. experts we're yeah. talking about the experts that's right and like so, speaking of experts, um, Robert Rodriguez, an expert director. Uh, mm-hmm. How how was that meeting him? Uh, okay, can we again just just get back back to the movie? Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank, no, you. Thank, thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and we are we're, we're we're talking about the 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 experts. The the experts. Yeah. 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 It was you know. Yeah. It was, so, yeah. It was shot in the eighties. Classic. But it, yeah. Right, and and these guys they have to, they're going to Russia. I mean, mm, it, it almost right. seems like they're they're in like a galaxy far far, far away. Okay, and because okay. I, supposed I see to where you're going down, here. It's like let me just nip time. this in the bud, dude. Let, I'm not here to talk about Star Wars, okay? Like, let's just talk about the movie. Okay, okay, okay. But All right. okay, okay. John Travolta is in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, did you get to touch the helmet? Is 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 like Grogu a dick in real life? How many yeah. hours a day did you have to film? Is Giancarlo Esposito gonna be on season two? I don't know. I, uh, Wait, are are you are you sad that you didn't get to meet Werner Herzog? Oh my God, every day. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm on to pressure. Question always come back to me. What were they thinking now? Oh, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, 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 welcome. Got a that's, bunch of that's welcome. That's plenty. Here. That's you're you're going welcome, over our welcome budget. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're gonna send welcome. us into a welcome deficit. Let, take it out of swear words. All right, fine. Um, this is the uh, what were they thinking podcast. Welcome. Uh, I am uh, Brendan, and joining me is the Ari Gross to my John Travolta, ladies okay. and gentlemen. What's what's your name, bud? It's Nathan, bud. Nathan. And uh, I. I I, I well, you know, I feel like actually I had a more a more fabulous mullet back in the day than than Revolta did in this one, but still, yeah. yeah. So hi, I'm I'm Nathan, and we're, we're gonna talk about the Sexperts. Uh, I wish. <laughs> oh, is that not the movie you watched? Oh no, Nathan. I no. only got through like the first 15 minutes of it. No, I need to. I that's because to... I was kind of tired that day. Okay, hold on. You need to take this tape. Okay. Okay. Go watch it. Come back. I'll wait. Oh my god, that was awful. There was no <laughs> lesbian sex or anything in that thing. I'm sorry, Nathan. The, the, the truth, the truth will set you free, though, as they say. Um, this podcast, though, I Nathan, got off we like twice. <laughs> no, that's up. Oh god. <laughs> well, maybe one scene. Um, we uh, this this podcast, we talk about bad to questionable movies, not not sex movies, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, Nathan. Um, but we did we did talk about um, a movie 
this week, starring John Travolta and Ari Gross. Who is he? We'll find out. Uh, we talk. We're going to talk about the experts. And joining us is an expert of another kind. You might say an expert in performance. Uh, a friend of the podcast, a friend of the show. We call him Big Time Galen now, ladies and gentlemen. Galen Howard. Hello, hello, and also hello. Yeah, and and now you charge double for your farts. I do, I do. I, you know, yeah. I mean, once um, once you go through the through the Star Wars universe, you know, your um, your, your farts are filled with collaxium, and uh, you know, they they it's a it's just a beautiful thing, you know. I farts. Yeah. Yes, intergalactic farts. Absolutely. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us your farts are are filled now with uh, midichlorians. Well, that too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Galen, mm-hmm. welcome yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ga- yeah. Galen farted first. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you know he's gonna go back and edit that. It's some weird cut to make it look like you both farted at the same time. Exactly. And it's like the whole you thing. Know, I mean, yeah. You gotta watch out for Greedo. I mean, you know, he has that. He has that weird diet. You know. <laughs> yeah, just space sludge and space. I don't know, sl- oh Jabba God. Farts. Yeah. Galen, you um you specifically requested this movie some time ago, uh, yes. pre pre you? Boba Fett fame, I will say. Yeah, exactly. So we did, yeah, we did yeah. just when kowtow to. But his I couldn't new... call in the, those those big favors, you know. <laughs> yeah, this we, was... could... we weren't kowtowing to his newfound celebrity. He just asked us if we wanted to talk about the experts, and I said, "Sounds great." But yeah. tell me, tell me, sir, um, why the experts? Um, because this movie is just it's a it's a big old mess. It's um, it's a it, there's there's so many talking points. I mean, this is like in the the Travolta Dark Age. Uh, I you know, believe it or not, one there was a Travolta eight. Dark Age. Yes, <laughs> yeah. one one of seven. Um, and uh, and yeah, this is this is just a a movie that honestly I think looks pretty good on paper. You have, I mean, you you have you have the the you have the 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 comedic weight of Travolta. You have the com you know the comedic prowess of the uh, Ari Gross and um and and then Dave Thomas um you know um n- not hot at all off of off of uh doing Strange Brew and but um but then but then the whole the whole premise is just um I think it there is a g- an interesting movie in here. It's just let it's like it was kind of like they they wanted to do a fish out of water comedy and then at the and then in like a very last rewrite just added in the, the like the KGB and <laughs> because it just it has like it has like the pacing of like an episode of northern exposure <laughs> and and like there you forget like every you forget like every 5 minutes that there's that that there's a that like this is like an espionage like a uh, spies like us comedy and i think like a like a hipster spies like us movie is like that I, that's something i would watch but this is just neither here nor there yeah um well i think maybe you forget about the kgb slash russian aspect of it is because they cast so many uh renowned russian actors to play the russians well, yes. in this movie oh yeah um, ab- 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 absolutely you well know. they do explain that away Kind of, but like, kind of. Come on, <laughs> like, they don't even look Russian. Um, yeah, yeah. They're well, not and supposed the, to, though. But some of them are. Some of them are supposed to be agents, right? <laughs> they look anyway. So we're talking uh, about yeah, the experts. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I yeah, I, I mean, we'll get into it. But yeah, there's 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 a lot of issues here. It, this movie was released in 1989, and if you're saying to yourself, listening to this, why have I never heard of the experts? Because I certainly didn't when Galen brought it up. I don't know if you had Nathan. Uh, I I when I saw the the poster art uh, mm-hmm. when I was looking for it, I do remember seeing that video cassette uh, at video stores when I was a kid. Um, but I was, you know, it it was not something that, that struck my fancy at all. A good sign of a of a of a movie's um you know kind of longevity is like on IMDb when the the primary photo on the poster you can see the creases in the poster. <laughs> yeah. you know the guy just took a picture of the actual poster. A picture of the poster. Ah, eh, yeah. this will do. 
yeah, but so so yeah, so if you haven't heard of this movie before, guys, don't worry. You are in the majority, I would say. This movie was released in 1989. It was finished in 1987, but in 1989, uh, it cost three million dollars to make. Does anyone want to venture a guess as to how much this made? I will say this: it was a bomb at three million dollar budget. Wow, which is uh, even then, I mean, that would be translate what to like probably like. Seven or eight million, million now. I'm gonna, or? Say, I'm gonna say half a million. Half a million. Yeah. yeah. Um. I okay. I'm gonna say. Uh. I I haven't looked at it, but I'm I'm gonna say. Uh. Two two hundred grand. One hundred and sixty nine thousand oh, dollars. We both overbid. We are both lost the showcase. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. The price is wrong, bitch. Um. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, I know this That's is the nuts. Travolta. I know this is the Travolta Dark Ages, so to speak, right. or one of them. But one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars off a three million dollar budget like that it's is. Those, but this one here, right. I, I feel like it almost be like it would have behooved them to promote it more as an ensemble piece, because there are other people like character actors that were in this that are that are good and, and would be kind of known that like at least to see them like Brian Doyle Murray's in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Charles Martin um, Smith. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, but yeah, that's 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 an unfortunate. Well, yeah, number. it's just not. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, not every movie can be a big hit like Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that film will hit you all right. Um, <laughs> like the, it's another one where it's like again, the you know, it's this, it's this very kind of lopsided concept of like they don't know how to play to the 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 fish out of water part of it or the espionage part of it it's like you don't um on the posters it's just like the the two of them just like looking like they're going to like some like new wave sock hop and you know and then like like, air guitar or something and then yeah it's has got her back to you with a silence pistol yeah yeah i I, I think there's a lot more like deep intrigue going on in this than there is yeah yeah um, but it, we kind of danced around it, so I will uh, try my best to briefly explain the plot of this movie. Plot! So this movie is, uh, it's supposed to take place, I believe, in 1987, because that's when it was supposed to be released. But of course, in 1989, the Cold War was like pretty much done. Almost or over. Almost yeah. over. So it came out at a very dumb, <laughs> with bad timing, too, because people yeah, were like, boy. this isn't really a thing anymore. Um, but, uh, it, it, essentially the Soviets have this fake American town in Moscow, uh, which they've designed to look sort of like, I think they said Nebraska, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be yeah. Indian Springs, Nebraska, Indian Springs, Nebraska. Um, and the, I mean, it looks like a 1950s American town because they haven't really updated it in a while. They have agents that go into this fake town to, to learn how to go undercover. They have people that actually were born and live in this town as Americans. And I don't think they know any better. Um, the ones that are actually right. born there. And then, so Charles Martin Smith, again, famous Russian, Charles Martin Smith, <laughs> uh, decides that uh, they need to update this town. So he goes into America, not in search of like, just, you know, ideas for what the culture is and maybe some magazines and movies and stuff. No, he goes to find the two dumbest people he can find, uh, played by John Travolta and Ari Gross, um, makes them think that he's uh, getting them to run his nightclub, uh, p- uh, Knocks them unconscious with a, you know, a roofie drink in a, in a plane, puts them in the city and essentially lets them open a nightclub. But at the same time, he's also hoping that they will help his agents uh, learn how to be more modern and accurate Americans. Hilarity ensues. Oh, yeah. I'm, can you hear me laughing? <laughs> I can hear you laughing internally. Internally. It was a very internal one. It was, yeah, it was an internal fart. <laughs> so much. So Paid many to farts. internal fart. Uh, <laughs> pay to internal fart you know somebody would get that one just because it's so inside and they don't understand it <laughs> yeah it's inside um, all right let me tell you oh dear it's internal it's internal um this this movie starts off with some great music and neon credits <laughs> oh so my god they go on forever ride. oh my god yeah this was the time of like the um of like goofy credits you know this is like weird this is what weird science this is all of them it's like like let's tell you what's going on and then yeah it's like neon credits of course there's the one where like the the, one of the letters kind of fritzes out it's like oh things are things aren't gonna go right this is a comedy of errors guys buckle up (laughs) 
Um, and we start off with what seems to be at first now, knowing Travolta's in this movie, I, I had written down and my assumption was that this was his some sort of wife selection, some Scientology uh, wife selection for Mr. Travolta. Okay. Which is funny because it's Kelly Preston uh, being mm-hmm. interviewed by uh, what appears to at first to be a very pervy Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> and right. it's, it's a weird interview. My first note on this is actually, what the hell is this interview? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's just like, uh, he's just interviewing her. And then Charles Martin Smith shows up. Uh, and I'm like, wow, more familiar faces just coming in yeah, one after the just, other. Just two creepy dudes just you know just 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 sandwiching this girl like what's going on that's that happened in the other movie that i watched <laughs> oh, but nathan this is a different thing this was okay. pg-13 this was pg sandwiches what All yeah. Right. All right. yeah in the middle of the porno uh people were just making sandwiches <laughs> just <laughs> that's, that's what they call it that's what they call it making sandwiches making yeah. sandwiches it's actually just gonna, uh, yeah it's, yeah, it's mommy and just, daddy were just in the were just in the bedroom making sandwiches. It's actually just misogynist porn. It's just a bunch of husbands getting their wives to make sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> While they sit on the couch. Yeah. Oh yeah, spread that mail. Oh, that sounds actually that could be in a yeah, regular no, porn. No, let's just stop. Yeah. Let's just stop now. Yeah, that could could be. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, Charles Martin Smith interrupts and starts asking about like sushi bars and heavy metal and Kelly Preston don't, doesn't know what that is. She says, oh, heavy metal is like a, a catalyst for plutonium bombs and uh, sushi bars. Well, I don't drink. And then we find out that this is actually part of an exercise in a class where they're uh, teaching Russians to be Americans. And she she didn't do too well. Yeah. And she and- suddenly br- breaks into a. It breaks into a Russian accent that it looks as though she she perfected uh, in quotes two minutes ago. <laughs> she just yeah once she once she cracks under pressure you know it's you know, because that you have to you have to be able to sell that you have to be able to sell like someone who is has perfected an English accent and then dips into the Russian but she don't. No. Well, that's the thing. That's why I mean, that's why it's weird that they're all Americans, like all the Russian yeah. characters. Like, I get the people in the town. Right. But like, but like the Russian agents are like Americans. Well, this right. is a, this is supposed to be like the Americans. But, you know, if the audience grew up eating paint chips and holding their breath for too long, <laughs> because the people are they're supposed to be undetectable. So right. to, like so their their accents would have to be absolutely non-existent. But I feel like not even having watched the Americans, I feel like in I that know. show they probably do a better job of making it seem like they could be Russian, you know what I mean? Like yeah. That's right. in this in this movie I never got the sense that they were like even Russian. Like I was like, "Wait, every time they said they were Soviets, I was like, "Oh Wait, yeah, what? Brian Doyle Murray right. was from the Soviet Union." <laughs> it's a, yeah. And they didn't even go with the hackneyed they, jokes about vodka or potatoes and bread lines or anything like that. Like, I mean, I guess, I guess, okay, maybe they're like, they're talking, speaking English to themselves to like, just kind of maintain it, like just keep in, you know, keep in the, um, and, you know, you know, kind of keep it fresh, keep it moving. But, you know, there is, yeah, there is no kind of just like break into like, yeah, so anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's super it's super yeah, weird. Watch right that country, the you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so Char- okay, Charles Martin Smith has a name in this, Smitty because I'm not saying Charles Martin Smith every time. <laughs> Smitty is uh, his his whole idea. He kind of butts heads with Brian Doyle Murray a little bit. God damn right. you, three name bastards. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, the, the three, two of them going back to back. Yeah, <laughs> he he's basically saying like uh, we need to bring in, like I said earlier, we need to bring in some modern type Americans uh, to to teach these old 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 fussy old fuddy duddies how to lighten up and be you know cool and actually See, accurate and i get that but he references in his questions to kelly preston sushi bars and mtv and heavy yeah. metal and he knows what these things are so he's clearly been exposed to them even if it's just through the research for his job right. why couldn't he just introduce these elements into the town right yeah, that, yeah. that's that kind of bring, yeah, it brings up a good point. It's like, yeah, like that should just be your, uh, that like, don't even, I'm like, yeah, if, if you assume you have to test them on that, then just 
introduce those concepts. Like when, because at this point he's like, I'm going to America. I'm going to find two guys to bring back and and yeah. get this done. Why doesn't he just go to America and improve on the learning that he has? Yeah. Then, yeah I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because he, yeah, he has at least a a casual knowledge of that. I guess it's because. Brian Doyle Murray is just training them in these things and is not including anything about pop culture. So he's there saying like, "Hey, Brian Doyle Murray, you you what you know you you have to be able to train them on these other things, or you know, or or no one's going to buy you know buy them as Americans. In. Yeah, yeah, they they're not going to fit in. They're not going to you know get all friendly. So Smitty goes and goes to America. Uh, he goes to find where does he go? He goes to New York, right? He goes to New yes. York to find. Yeah, to find some current modern hip Americans, and mm -hmm. he he uh, sees John Travolta and Ari Gross, who but I think they're they're supposed to be bus boys, and they pretend like they can let this guy into they they pretend they can let this random guy into the club. They're like, oh, you want a table? You want a table? Make him pay pay them off, and then Travolta literally hands him a table. It's like a oh! table, the best table in the house. Yeah, and then um and then like I I love this idea of like Travolta being like the tough guy, but also like he like. When the guy loses his shit, he does this like little dance away from him. It's like almost like he like a ballet move. Did you happen to notice the name of the club that they were working at? AKA Dump Nightclub. Which means it's a shit nightclub. Yeah. I don't know what the AKA dump. at the beginning is for. Also, also known, known, as, known as, dump, as also known, known as Dump Nightclub. But it's a <laughs> That's why I said it's a shit nightclub, a.k.a. Yeah. dump nightclub. But I feel like there should have been something before the a.k.a. Like, it didn't make sense that it started with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, guys, you don't know that 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 popular 80s dance, the dump? It's like, <laughs> hey, let's let's go, let's do the dump. I That's thought that was a dance paid to, uh, paid to dump. That's the one that comes. <laughs> that, that Actually, that was the dance sensation that swept the nation after the butt. Yeah, the dump. <laughs> the dump. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, do the I butt, mean, then the you butt, do the dump. Then, then naturally, then comes the dump. The dump, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First comes the butt, then, and comes, then the comes the dump. The dump. Yep. Paid to dump. Paid to dump. <laughs> you only get A plus material on this show, folks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Um. So Travolta, number one, has a a, a really gross but amazing mullet. Uh, <laughs> oh God, it's a, it's incredible. It's, the hair it in this a film. It's stellar yeah. mullet. Hopefully, it is a stellar uh, mullet. Yeah. It's 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 something else. <laughs> And so, and, and then we, and then his buddy Ari Gross is not going to get away scot free either because his hair is something is very fluffy and he has feathered this, out to all over. Oh, and this one like dangly earring that he has, <laughs> as was the style of yeah, the it looks, yeah. you know, yeah, it looks like Cindy Lauper got a bikini wax on his head. <laughs> oh my goodness! Ari just wants to have fun. That's what it is. He sure does. <laughs> she bob. Um, she bob. <laughs> they fought, we find out that uh, Travolta uh, blew all blew all of uh, the money that was given to them by Ari's dad, which we never really go back to um, uh, on starting a nightclub and never got off the ground. And then they go back to Travolta's place and all his stuff is gone. And his girl, Denise, his girlfriend, Denise, who we never meet, has yeah. split with all his stuff, which is apparently stuff. not that much, no. according to his friend. I did notice that the, the city scenes. Uh, in this must have been shot in Vancouver because there was a BC liquor store like right behind them as they're walking down the block in this scene. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I had a feeling with the three million dollar budget that this was shot in, <laughs> not in the places where they said. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, no. You're you're saying that when they go to that uh, fake town, they didn't build a fake town in Moscow <laughs> just to shoot there? <laughs> yeah, no. It's all movie magic, baby. Whoa. That's Hollywood, baby. Hollywood. <laughs> so yeah, they're kind of in, in, down in the dumps, and then uh, they're they're walking around, and they are slowly followed by uh, Smitty, who's in a cab, and he must have paid this cab driver so much money to just follow these guys all night. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I had a question too. Can you do that in real life? I feel like if you said to a cab driver, "Hey, you see that guy? Let's just follow him all night." I feel if like they would maybe say something. If you're gonna pay them. Uh, I don't it know. Is a, it is a common trope. It is that common trope. Follow, follow that cab. Yeah. Follow just, those people very I, slowly. I just wonder. I So I get like follow that car to some extent. Like maybe you could say like, oh, that's my friend. We just need to fo follow where he's going or whatever. But follow that guy walking along the sidewalk very slowly. I don't know. I feel like if I was a cab driver, I'd be like, mm, am I going to get shot? <laughs> 
I don't know. It was a simpler time. Though. New York in the 80s, baby. New York <laughs> in the 80s. So simple, yeah. S- safe New York in the 80s, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, everything was Disneyfied. Bernie, Bernie Getz was there to look after you. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't make oh any God. Su- oh, boy. <laughs> don't make oh, any boy. sudden moves. <laughs> Too yeah. soon, guys? Too soon? Yeah. No, I'll make, but no, I mean, no you're, uh, yeah, but no, you're right. Um, you're right, Nathan. It was it was shot uh, British Columbia, um, Ontario, and Vancouver. Wow. There you go. America is apple lake, pie. Yeah. yeah, Niagara and the lake. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they're they're asked by uh, uh, Smitty. He says, you know, I've got I've got this I got this nightclub because somehow he heard them talking about the nightclub, uh, even though we didn't see him anywhere nearby in the scene. No, but no, sure, whatever. He saw them working. Like, yeah, but I mean, I don't up- think he. But he was he pulled up to the the nightclub. He saw them there, probably figuring that they were working there and not just you know glorified busboys. Yeah, but I but the thing it's is so, like when they so have that weird. conversation about how they were gonna start a nightclub, it sounded like he had heard that specific conversation. That's why right. I was like, I don't mm-hmm. think he would have. But hey, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise it's like yeah, you, hey you're. Hey, you're working at like a 7-Eleven. Do you want to come manage this other 7-Eleven? <laughs> Do you want to build one from the ground up? And up, please. Yeah. <laughs> he says, yeah. Um, you come and come and work at my nightclub. I'm starting up a nightclub. And of course, they're both like, come on, guy. And then it doesn't take much convincing before they're no, both not in at the all. cab with him. Yeah. Yeah. And they want to do it they... in Middle America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and the, yeah. And then once tonight. they're in the cab, they don't. It doesn't take much convincing at all he just like you know flashes the money at them and 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 at this point like you don't like because it at this point you have to you would in order to be on their side you have to get a sense of like of of what their what their what what their what their hopes and dreams are what uh, you know what what they want out of life you know nothing about that there isn't really anything you know i not to not not to get into like you know bullshit craft and everything but like you know there, there's like the constant there's the, the there's like the constant um trope of like of the the save the cat moment the thing that that endears us to these people other than like travolta makes a table joke and then gets dumped by his girlfriend i mean there's there's really nothing that in endears you to these people i mean they're just they're kind of selfish they they do have a sense of loyalty to each other though yeah i guess um so yeah they like you said they quickly uh agree to everything it, at one point smith they asked somebody if they're, they're gonna have wheels and he's like wheels like a, like transportation oh yes of course wheels and it's like how do you wheels you don't anyway whatever um yeah yeah, yeah. he's uh, yeah doesn't he say like oh you mean like big wheels you guys are gonna be big wheels like what yeah. is his <laughs> yeah. uh expertise in american culture uh, appears and vanishes that's, as a plot convenience. Yeah. Yeah, it's up and down, up and down, up and down. It's like, yeah, so at first he first he knows uh, you know, he he knows about like sushi bars and MTV and then it's like what's a big wheel? Like what? It's like <laughs> Look, yeah, that doesn't compute. I I'll, I'm I'm just going to say guys, this movie may have been poorly written. I'm I'm mm-hmm, I'm putting it mm-hmm. out there. Maybe, maybe a little bit. I'm yeah. I'm just going to say. Yeah. That. Well, you know, it I mean, I don't know how you could say that uh, uh, Brendan because it was um because I looked up the writers, one of them also his only he only has one other credit, but it was an episode of G.I. Joe. <laughs> wow, a real American hero. And um, the, and then yeah, and then um, and then the other another writer wrote um, Hard Bodies and Hard Bodies Two. Oh, and Hard Bodies Two. Mm-hmm. Not just a story by credit for Hard Bodies. No, nope, no, nope, no. He was he, he was right in there. Yeah. Wow. Gave you the um, nitty gritty. I... I do know, too, that this was also like heavily rewritten by the studio uh, w- later on. So I don't know what that means, but it was well, too many cooks situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they get on the corporate jet. They're like they're all excited to go to the quote unquote Midwest. Um, and of course, Smitty drugs them because he doesn't want to see that they're going to Moscow, although they're, st- right. they're so stupid that they probably wouldn't know anyway. Um, yeah. And they pass out in their food and wake up in a child's room in bunk beds which my until we found out where they were my first note was why bunk beds yeah it's almost like they were they were dropped into the middle of a training uh sequence in like some horror movie or terrible action movie yeah he was on a plane he drug and then he and then he woke up in some 1950s model town where no one was there 
They were yeah. also dressed in pajamas. They were stripped from their clothes. Yeah. They were stripped naked and put in like um put in like perfectly sized pajamas. Yeah, and they they laugh at each other, of course, because they have these silly pajamas on. Those, those yeah, pajamas I, I are pretty they, conservative when you get right down to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, don't they? They 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 assume that they they had like a crazy night with some chicks. Which, like, yeah, okay, in the bunk bed, sure. In the bunk beds, yeah, in the bunk beds, yeah. Making sandwiches. <laughs> making make making them sweet sandwiches, yeah, <laughs> gluten free sandwiches. What's what's what was your girl like? Oh man, she made me a peanut butter and jelly that would drive you crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. A Monte Cristo <laughs> dipping in that jelly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when they wake up, they they come downstairs and uh, they start throwing around these like I guess they're supposed to be cool hip terms. Like I've never heard anyone call coffee bean juice. Never once in my life. Thank you. Have bean you? juice. Nope. Bean no, I, I have not. Because yeah. if, if someone said bean juice to me, I'd think they were talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think I paid to make bean would, juice. Yeah. I, I would be like, wait, is there like a bean juice? Those people in the other movie that I watched, Galen. <laughs> yeah. Paid to make bean juice. Bean juice. Yeah. Give oh, wait. Oh, juice. God. Wait. Were you watching a fetish video, Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the. No, no. Those aren't the beans I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know, but I don't know anything about the birds and beans. <laughs> bird, bird, the birds and the beans, yeah. yeah. I also love when they they come down the stairs and his and his wife is startled by by them, as if it, like the guy didn't tell them like, oh, hey, we've got the you know we've got the experts you know staying in like the other kid's room or whatever. It's like, yeah, what is that like our dead son's room or something? I don't know. <laughs> it's like north. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want Hugh. It should um, have been it should have been Dan Aykroyd and Reba McIntyre as this oh couple. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with their fat son. Oh man. Um, Travolta does amaze everyone, uh, all the kids, the kids anyway, with his Walkman. So they go browsing through the town. There's a, a little movie theater playing like a 1950s monster movie. Uh, mm-hmm. There's old men playing checkers. Uh, of course. I I, I did kind of laugh. I, they did get one, the old guys right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I did kind of laugh though at the old man, old, old men playing checkers scene where he says, uh, uh, "Gotta, gotta paint the back porch this weekend. Gotta sand it first though." And Travolta is just like, "Oh, don't overdo it. Like, the, you know, don't overdo the excitement." That kind of, that kind of was funny. Um, there's some old style cafes, and and then of course, knowing this, seeing this, seeing the movie up to this point, we're like, "Yeah, this looks like the world of the 1950s." So of course we have to have Ari Gross basically. He might as well look right into the lens and be like, "This is just like the 1950s." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no video stores. There's no joggers. No joggers. Yeah. Oh my God. The, the couldn't age this more by being like, "There's no joggers, <laughs> video stores." <laughs> See the the. Uh, the video stores, I, I probably couldn't forgive that. That is a legitimate thing to point out uh, at this point in the 80s. But it is the Midwest, and it is a small town in the Midwest. So it's perfectly reasonable for there being just no random joggers out on the street. Well, it should be very cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, summer in the Midwest, I mean. Oh, yeah, but I mean, they're also actually in Moscow, so it's probably very but, cold. I mean, but if it's if it's summer in Moscow, I mean, it's, it's not frozen there all the time. I don't yeah. know. I've never been. The, the the thing that bums me out about this film is that I think there's the cold there's war. There's so much. Uh, what? The, the cold, cold war? war. Oh yeah, of course. Bum um, me out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Getting right in my bum bum. Um. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. I, hey, I, did you watch Nathan's movie? Oh, where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I wish I did. I really wish I did. Um. There's so uh, there's so much fun to have here. I mean, like the fact yeah. of like. Building this, uh, building a small town in Moscow. There's, um, the there's, I mean, there could have been like sequences of like, you know, oh, and we, you know, and we perfected these details and we did these things and and all this stuff. But it's not just here. It is small town. Yeah, accept it. Move on. Yeah, they don't do anything with the idea of this really at all. It just no. kind of, yeah, it just kind of exists. I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Sm- Smitty, we get a little bit of conflict. We see a little bit of conflict here between Smitty and uh, Brian Doyle Murray, um, because Doyle Murray is like, you know, telling this other guy who's like dressed as a priest, 
um, to just kind of right. let them let, let let Smitty kind of fail on his own with this whole project. Like, and and then we'll kind of pick up the scraps. So I guess we kind of established those two as like the real bad guys. Because they're the yeah. ones who are trying to get, have this whole thing fail. So so Smitty fails and is probably going to get executed along with his whole family because it's Russia in the 80s. They go to a, uh, our, our heroes, I, I guess if you want to use that word, they go to mm-hmm. a, a burger place that apparently it's is closed, closed for lunch. lunch. <laughs> yeah. So Travolta grabs a pack of sugar and they share a pack of sugar as if it, and, the, and the, the way that scene is so odd because when they finish eating the sugar, it's like they just had a meal. They're just like, oh, wow, pretty good. That's pretty okay. good. It's like they it never was, had sugar before. It was, it was cocaine. <laughs> well, <laughs> satiate the hunger. <laughs> that was yeah. They, they'll, they'll make a joke and then they don't know how to. They'll like pick up a joke and just drop it and just like again, like here you are, you're welcome. Here, the, here's this hilarious bit. There's almost no jokes. It's almost yeah. just like this is. It's just gonna be funny because we're acting so goofy. But there's no like really. There's not a lot of like punchlines to stuff. It does no. feel like like a lot of it was just like. They're gonna get like two two big comedy heavyweights and just let them riff the whole time. And they, they did. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, just like guys, just just here's here are the beats of the scene. Just you know, uh, then at the end you're uh, you're upset because there's no food, and then yeah, and then then it's just like, well, what are you eating? We're starving. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious, you guys. Oh, you nailed it. Moving on, moving on. And it's moving like, on to Smitty showing them their their nightclub that they're gonna open. And you've oh, got a God. seasoned comedy veteran like Dave Thomas directing this thing. Mm. You think at any point he stopped and was like, guys, this is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. Yeah. yeah. Like, let him cast comedians, guys. Yeah. It could have been. I, I would also believe that um, that Dave Thomas walked out halfway through and the rest of it was directed by David Miscavige. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife was still nowhere in sight. <laughs> nope, nope. Guys, where she's out she? making sandwiches. Yeah, <laughs> she's just making sandwiches in like a little fallout shelter. Yeah. <laughs> on the Sea Org. Yeah. Look, if we can somehow weave in North Korea, I think we could probably uh, get ourselves assassinated. So let's try it out, guys. There we go. <laughs> North Korea. <laughs> well, there's a fake town in North Korea, actually. That's... <laughs> it's called North Korea. No, <laughs> yeah, it's used for like they they have like like streets lined with like fake stores with nothing oh, yeah. in them and but it's all for like photo ops yep oh, oh, wow. oh I, i've yeah. seen the interview i've seen that historical drama i know all about them <laughs> oh so yeah the nightclub like you said the, the nightclub is introduced and it just it looks it looks terrible it looks it's like garbage bar. yeah yeah. And, um, Travolta is super optimistic about it and starts moonwalking because again, Travolta <laughs> just his comedy instincts are on point. Um, well, yeah, you know it's it, you know when in when in doubt you dance. You know? Well, I mean for Travolta that's not a bad strategy as we'll see later. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. But Ari thinks this place sucks and that no one's gonna come here. And, and uh, you know what, Ari Gross, listen, I'm just gonna say it right now. You two were dumb to come here, but I mean he's giving you a thousand dollars a week, which is a lot of money in 1989. Well, a lot of not too bad now, honestly. Too, it, right. it, it, yeah. It'll pay your rent now. Yeah. Yeah. For no, sure. that, that's that's good. That's that's pretty good now. Mm. But like he's giving you a thousand dollars a week. Eighty-seven. That's that's a king's ransom for a wage for a week. Oh, well, that's what I mean. To run this nightclub, literally, he's giving. And- you Everything Blank you check. need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but Ari Gross is like, nope, this is going to fail. No one's going to come here. Everyone's an old farty pants. Everyone here is paid to fart. They're not going to come here. Exactly. So he go- he goes and makes a collect call to uh, to New York. His parents start yelling at him on the at the phone or on the phone, not at the phone. At and the then phone. I feel the dad phone. had the receiver like out of like a foot in front yeah. of his face while he was doing his yelling. Yeah. And we never see them, too. It's all off screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he runs into a cute girl with a bunch of books as if this is like a teen comedy or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, I'll tell you the how disinterested in this are just will give you whiplash. I how, mean, how disinterested I was in this movie by this point was that I took note of how many different ways her books shifted as they went from scene cut to cut to cut for different angles and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, she didn't have that book before. Oh, hey, that book was on the bottom the last time. You were you were playing the continuity game. Yeah, we had a we have a um, this friend breakup scene by the way way too early in the movie even if it's temporary. Way too early. 
Like, what are we doing? We've known them. We've seen them for like, it's, it's, we're like 30 minutes into the movie and they're already like, well, I'm leaving. 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's not even the halfway point. It's literally, yeah. Like that's the, that's like, that's the second act is, is them being like, him being like, I'm going to leave. Never mind. I saw a, I saw a cute girl for five seconds and like <laughs> lost my stay. shit. Yeah. Now I'm, must... now I'm going to stay. Wait, wait, there's a girl in this town. A That's cute girl by the delicious pig feet to celebrate. Oh, th- that was what? such a weird scene. The, he, goes back to the, he goes they, back they, to the bar. There's, there's a, there's a jar of pig's feet. Again, yeah. that seemed like something where it was just like, Hey, Hey, pl- here's some crazy props. Play with some crazy now, props. Let's eat some pig's feet. Never mind. I've that never was the joke. had. I've that never was had, the joke. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if necessarily that is all of the joke because I've never had pickled pig's feet, but I'm quite positive that the what they sit in is not supposed to be congealed like the thing that that like was in this scene. Yeah, they're yeah. in like a they're in like a brine. Hmm. Yeah, but the joke is like we're gonna eat it. No, we're not. Ha ha ha. Laughs. This is gross. Well, yeah, it's pickled pig's feet. Get on board or don't. Yield pickled pig's feet. Also, he says when he's when Ari Gross is like, yeah, I'm coming back because like I believe in it, and also basically because I saw a girl for five seconds and my dick exploded. He says <laughs> he he said she's a bit of a hathead. What the fuck is a hathead? He doesn't say hothead. Trust me, no, I thought. Said, yeah, yeah, no, I saw the I I checked the. Are you the sure subtitles. he wasn't doing it in a New England accent? No, no the, the subtitles do say hathead. They do say hat head, and I was like, yeah. I don't know what. She's a, a bit of a hat head. Does that mean she Does has like just a means ca- like her like her hair is like like she has like hat hair or mm-hmm. like like a, ca- like a Karen haircut or something like is a short yeah, hair. Yeah, like she just has like she has like sm- her hair is all smushed. Yeah, it was weird. Like she just doesn't. She has she has like a bad hairdo. I guess is that what he's tra- saying? Or she's like a conservative traditionalist Sunday church hat wearing lady. Sure. Hat head. Hat head. Yeah, I'd never heard that before. I can see why they why they brought these guys in, you know, teach them about bean juice and hat heads. <laughs> <laughs> but then they go into a hilarious comedy routine right after. I mean, they're hitting us with so many in a, in a row. It, it takes the wind out of you. But they're like, Princess Anne going to be there. So and so is going to be there. Andy Warhol is going to be. Well, maybe not because he's dead. Get it? Well, well, dead. Yeah. Well, um, and we, then we, we have did, a whole. When did Andy Warhol die? Uh, a couple years before. I think a couple years before this. It was like 86 or 87. Yeah, I think around that time. He was at the first WrestleMania, wasn't he? He was at the MTV, the war to settle the score. That's what it was. Was it? Okay. Yeah, he was interviewed where he was like, oh, the wrestling, it's just fantastic. It's the wrestling. It's great. It's wonderful. It's so beautiful. And then he walked away. Um, And then he died. Then he died right after that. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Uh, February 87 is when he died. There you go. Yeah. So they would. Yeah. So if they were filming in 87, he had just died. So probably Dave Thomas on the set was like, guys, Andy Warhol just died. You can riff something on that. And they're like, okay. Andy Warhol. We'll be at our nightclub. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Cut to um, what I think may might have been most of the budget besides John Travolta (laughs) is a montage set to Back in the USSR covered by someone that wasn't the Beatles, though. cover of Back in the USSR, not the original. Well, and I I love it. They – they set it up as like, here's the big song. Like, you know, it wasn't just where they, they just filled it in. Cause they're doing like jet plane hands. They're yeah. doing like jet plane arms. So obviously there's like, Hey, remember this one. And, um, um, it, yeah. And they, um, and, and they, yeah. The, and yeah. But it is a, it's a cover of, um, of back in the USR. And, um, I, I looked it up and the, and it's performed by, Everyone's favorite, Jack Mac and the Heart Attack. Oh, my, that is my favorite. Oof. Mm-hmm. Talk about uh, soundtrack royalty. You're right up there with Kenny Loggins and uh, um, Jan Hammer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Berlin. And, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, Jan Hammer. Well, yeah, yeah. Ja- Jan Hammer and Jan Hammer. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. Yeah, back to back. No, no. Um, I, just, I just said I, I, that's another person. I, I, I don't know if it's pronounced Jan or Jan. <laughs> I like in, the, in Jan. the background of this, um, uh, this whole montage. Uh, Smitty's there making it rain at one point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they settle on the like the dumbest name for their fucking uh, nightclub. So they they previously worked at AKA Dump. So they worked at a shit nightclub. <laughs> They named their their club that they're opening that's supposed to be the next best thing. So Soho. 
<laughs> so it's like it's kind of all right, sort of New Yorky. I thought um I thought when yeah. you said it's, it was, yeah. is it Soho? Eh, it's so Soho. So yeah, again, they're they they're putting the nightclub together and then they go through this interview process, which again <laughs> is a, a scene with no laughs whatsoever, I don't nope. think. Uh, oh, yeah. Father Roid Rage. <laughs> Father Roid yes. Rage. Uh, yeah. So so yeah, they inter- they introduce this um one I guess one of the villains is this like angry priest. Yeah. I, again, and, you don't... Uh, yeah, and the whole this the fall whole on bit Fox. Bit. What? This fall on Fox. Angry, yeah, angry priest. priest. Angry priest. <laughs> Lewis Black in the role he was born to play. <laughs> oh, I would that that I would that, watch I would, that I would, show. I would, I would have loved if he was in this part instead. I don't know who this guy is, but he's oh. just the whole time oh. just like I I didn't I didn't understand the scene. What ha- what was going on in the scene? In the, or neighbor in the burbs. Yeah. Oh, is yeah. is that, is he the neighbor in the burbs? I thought it was him. Uh, oh wow. He he is. Uh, yes, he is, and he's also in uh, a little movie called The Experts. Oh. Um, he's also in uh, it. Nathan, he's in a movie we've covered. He's in Encino Man. Yep, he was the science teacher. Yeah, there you go. Oh wow. And he was in Last Action Hero. He played the eponymous role of Tom Noonan's agent. <laughs> <laughs> so. He's done some stuff, guys, okay? <laughs> he did yeah. a lot of character work. He sure did. Um, but, but yeah, yeah he, I didn't he, know what, what was going on in this scene. He's, well, he's, I think... He, he wants a job. Uh, he, the priest wants agent. a job. He's not one of the townspeople. He's, I, know. I think he's an agent, but he wants to get out of that having to pretend to be a priest role that he's been doing. And I think he wants to be in the uh, fucking milk truck tanker that they're... Uh, Offices set up. Why wouldn't they just set up their office in like City Hall? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Like these thunderpates are never gonna go into City Hall. Now, I mean, now guys, yeah. did he think? Did he think at this point that Travolta and Ari Gross were like also agents? Because I think the other agents, most of them think that they're just agents. Well, the, the townspeople think they're KGB agents in training. I thought some there of the to other kind of test them. I thought some of the other KGB agents thought they were agents oh, too. Oh, yes, because that's that's what Kelly Preston is originally confused with, isn't she? And the other girl too. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's just so they well, Galen, I'll tell you why this scene exists. It's so they can make a hilarious joke when the black guy gets hired, um, when they reference Nat uh, King Cole and uh, Travolta, and he asks Travolta, "Are you only hiring me because I'm black?" And he says, "Yep." <laughs> Neat. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, yeah, and the and yeah, and then it was like great. And then they oh, the guy, oh my god, the, the, the guy oh. who worked 12 years at uh, Big Boy Burger or whatever it was, and Beef he, Burger he, Boys. He starts talking about how he had a few beers, and I'm like, what? What is the joke here? It's driving <laughs> me crazy. I don't get it. It's like, like am I supposed again, to be laughing? It, it's, it's like it's like bad improv. It's like, yeah. hey, did you have any drinks before here? Yep. And I think the uh, the the joke of this is that these guys are so. Um, I don't know, incompetent that they would hire a guy who would drink before coming into a job interview. That The joke isn't the guy who's drunk at the job interview. It's the two idiots that would hire him. But it's like, it's done with no style. Oh, no, 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 no it's no funny. No it, panache, it's, no nothing. nothing yeah, and, and there's also no, there. there's nothing at stake. There's never, I mean, I get it that they, they hire these dumb guys, but there's, you never see like the the attempts on anyone's part. If anyway, if the whole town is in on this, you don't see like them against the town. You don't see like everyone kind of. There's so much fun to be had. It's like the the, the whole town like gathering around them and like creating you know creating this whole facade. And there's none of that. It's just everyone. There's zero stakes in every scene. Yeah, not enough people were eating steak. I agree. Mm-hmm. It should have mm-hmm. just been plates and plates of steaks. It's just that would have that would have well, made the more movie American, improved by twenty percent. Right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but well, what's more American? I'm glad you asked that because at some point here, Travolta says the key to modern America is Japanese products, and he tells uh, Smitty maybe you should bring oh. in a bunch of uh, microwaves and toasters and yeah. uh, a vibrators. And he's approaching apparently. pirate shirt. His shirt is approaching like pirate shirt levels. He oh. almost looks like. So Seinfeld many from that episode. Yeah. 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 Oh, the pirate, the pirate shirt episode. Yeah. But but he's but he's getting but he's getting Smitty and and Smitty's like, well, if I brought all these American products in, do you think that would help? And he said, 
I think it would. And he said, well, we'll come back to this. Meaning he's telling the audience, hold on, wait for the hilarious part where I bring all these products in because it's going to be hilarious. It's coming this, later. You, you, you set up the joke, you set it up, and you knock him down. Right. Um, and instead we get a we get a bit here where a bunch of old ladies coming down, uh, welcoming them to the town with a bunch of pies. So this nightclub, when it opens, has a big, like, fucking buffet table with all these pies. There's music playing. There's a bar. And obviously no one's dancing. They're just eating pie. There's kids in there. The sheriff doesn't care because it's got, so goddamn wholesome. And and I mean, I will say that the, the good part about the about this movie here, and this is not nothing to do with the movie. This is solely John <laughs> Travolta is that Travolta gets to show off his legitimately great dance moves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, Travolta to, is a great dancer. I will. say. I, I thought this was like a Club Nouveau song. I was like, is this Club Nouveau's Lean on Me? They didn't have that kind of budget for this thing, did they? But no, it's just that that hook that that is the opening of it. And it's just the most scandalous dance. Yeah. But I, you know, I was wondering, like, do you think Tarantino saw this movie and was like, oh, hundred percent, you know, challenge, I know, challenge yeah. accepted. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> I, 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 he was like, okay, like, remember what you did in the experts. You and know, let like, me let me bring that same heat. He said, remember what you did in the experts, and Travolta said, I do not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. I think. I think Travolta. I think Travolta got mind wiped after this movie. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, Scientology. I think, that, that'll happen. He. I think he might have gotten mind wiped during the movie too. <laughs> um, but he's he's dancing around. Meanwhile, uh, that girl that Ari was so sweet for that he barely met, uh, shows mm-hmm. up and and she, she, he doesn't want her to pay for her drink. She wants to pay for it. He doesn't want her to pay for it. So he rips up the bill in pieces. So no one gets money. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just it, yeah, that, that it's it, it's an endearing moment. You just you love his character. It's like m- money means nothing to him. He's all about true love. Money means nothing to him except for the fact that he's also staying there for $1000 a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, then why then what what it's yeah, he he's making them he's making them big clams, you know. Yeah. He's what what's a, you know, what's a little drink money for him? He's just all now now he's he's got the money. Now he just wants the heart. You get the, first, you get the money, then you, then get, the you get the heart, then you get the pussy. <laughs> right? Is that how Scarface goes? Something yes. like that. Yeah, yeah it's something okay. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Travolta's dancing around. He's getting frustrated because no one seems to know how to dance. Enter Kelly Preston. Va va boom. Yeah, yeah. Kelly Preston looking amazing in this movie, and they do some really dirty dancing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is apparently the movie where they met, by the way. Who would have thought – who would be able to point out this movie as, like, the movie where their eyes met and they just fell head over heels? <laughs> right. They were just uh, – yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and unless it was just, like, we're both depressed and we hate our lives and this is the only thing that's <laughs> going to make it worthwhile. As if we get married. The only way we're getting out of this hole is climbing out together. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they, they – true love. They grind on each other. They're they're getting oh, real. Man. They're basically there some, having. There's some heavy grinding. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're almost having sex on the dance floor. Like it's <laughs> pretty close. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then she kind of she kind of finishes the dance and walks away, and he stands there very uh, hot and bothered. Um, and then cu- there's the awkward pan around. <laughs> yeah. So every because everyone's watching because I mean he's dancing. Everyone's got to stop and see what's going on. But again, it's like, what's the joke? It's like, it's not, nothing. It's like one of those where it's like, that was awkward. And then they move on and nothing happens. They could have, like, it's a, it's not a good joke, but they could have at least just like, I don't know, showed that he had a boner. Well, doesn't, don't they dull sting it where like his last line in the scene was like, uh, oh, I was, I forgot what I was going to tell you or something like that. Like he gets, she gets him so twitter pated that he can't remember and that's i guess the joke that I this guess. unflappable cool guy is absolutely flappable well uh, we do cut, get we do get the cut to some cold outside and are they not as a thing there's like I, it wasn't full on winter but i did get a sense that it was supposed to be colder at the airport than it was in town well mm-hmm. first of all before we get there travolta beans smitty's kid in the head with a football Mm-hmm. Oh my guess. Because he's like he's trying to play catch with them and he doesn't do very well. And then of course uh Smitty shows up. They reiterate that he's gonna go get all that stuff into town. 
And then, yes. And then, uh, uh, yeah. And then they run back into uh, Kelly Preston um, and Travolta is making all these like sexual references. And he says, there will be an exchange of body parts. I'm sorry. What? (laughs) That's that's not fluids. Fluids is what he should have said. Yeah. Just like in that other movie that I watched. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, are they? What are they? Are, are they saying like th- these guys are just funny that they ju- they just don't they don't get the phrases right because they say body parts and bean juice? I don't know. Maybe that's they're like they were trying to the force of how hip and urban these these guys were, how how New York club scene they were. Yeah, I guess they were, was that they were using to be slang like that you didn't even know, man. This seems like it was like written from someone in like a New England town. Yeah. Who had never what, been to New York? What sounds wicked funny and smart like uh, uh, some douchebag in New York would say? <laughs> they exchange body parts, you know, yeah, all we'll that go, shit. Okay, get on in the donkeys. Uh, when, get when, a salsa. Donut. When, he, when he said that, it sounded like what, what, fucking Casey Affleck write the script or something? Exactly. Um, <laughs> some guy in New England. That's what, that's some, what yeah. Galen said. It's, yeah, it sounded and, uh, and, it, and and last I checked, Casey Affleck is the only guy in New England. So. He's just, well, he's just some guy. No, he's it's just guy. him. It's just yeah. him. Yeah. It's, no, yeah, I have yeah. I have it on good authority that the Dropkick Murphys are, are they live there too. Okay. <laughs> well, fine, they're then. very adamant about it. <laughs> Ari walks into the diner and uh, sees that girl again to the tune Jill. of the song uh, Sherry Baby, which again a big part of the budget I would imagine. Which they, you yeah. know what they they should have made her name. Sherry instead of Jill. Yeah. Yeah. Jilly baby. Yeah. <laughs> Jilly. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, yes, we cut to the airport. Uh, like you were saying, Nathan, that this pilot arrives with all those supplies and Smitty now we tells can't him, leave. Now you can't leave. Now you live in the town. He's like, what? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah uh, I like, am yeah. Beck Bennett's father. You must let me leave. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Like the, Beck Bennett, I'm just saying. Does. The right. Uh, the. The Russian with like a hairdo that you could just like eat toast off of. Oh, he's got the Johnny Unitas cut for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, again, the jo- and the joke in this scene is that he thinks he's getting arrested because he stole a box of, a, b- a bunch of condoms from the supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is which jo- which don't worry is a joke they come back to. You it's don't worry. Russia in the eighties, they'll put you in jail for anything. Yeah. yeah. Womp womp. <sighs> Meanwhile, Ari gets uh, somehow gets a kiss from this girl that he's been kind of stalking. Um, <laughs> uh, Suddenly and- they're in love. I don't understand. Oh, I, I, yeah. This is also the scene where they start distributing all of the goods uh, to the town because they, they have like this. It's essentially 80s makeover because they're getting like all these 80s products. Uh, one of the ladies finds a massager and mm-hmm. uh, and then I think. Is it, I think it's Brian Doyle Murray and Father Royd Rage who are, are going on <laughs> about how this is going to be the destruction of the, their town and their country and their culture. And I only had to note, it's kind of how Romania got done in. I'm just going to put that out there yeah. because if if, hey. if he had let well if he hadn't <laughs> if he hadn't let the 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 people of Romania watch Dallas trying to prove a point of how extravagantly and how, and awful these people are, all the people in Romania wouldn't, wouldn't be like, hey, how come we don't have nice cars like that? How come we don't have nice clothes like that? How come we don't have all kinds of food like that? And then that that's kind of what led to the um, the, the civilian uprising in Romania in the 80s. And, yeah. yeah, so and Travolta's a little mad that they're not just selling this stuff. He's like, you sell it, you give away the $5, uh, $5 nightclub ticket, We're finally making some sense in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love this scene where they, they, they've they given Smitty's wife a makeover it, and to make her look exactly like Ari Gross. Yes. <laughs> that was weird. And then yeah, all where of a sudden... He just, yeah, where Ari Gross apparently just, yeah, gave, you know, like dug into his own uh, like into his own suitcase and just like wear this shit and then just like you know get your like poodle hair and and then like yeah and then, yeah like, charles martin smith just is like it's just like ready to go to town after he sees that <laughs> you look like Ari gross yes please you look like an expert for sure Mm, and and yeah. not, not to mention before that, I'm pretty sure he was about to eat two frozen hot dogs and a piece of bread. I think that's what he did when he was so sitting at the table. So she shows him how to make sandwiches. 
You teach a man to make sandwiches, you feed him for a lifetime. But this is that that's this is his redemption story arc because he becomes a true Renaissance man of the '80s who is progressive enough to know that he he can make his own sandwiches. Horrible. And uh, yeah, <laughs> even with hot dogs, you can make uh, a, a frozen hot dog sandwich too. It's a very progressive. A uh, redemption-filled movie. You know what? Forget about it. Five stars. I love this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Ab- absolutely. It's like you know, it's more progressive than Flow. This movie. <laughs> Again, like you said, the the father, uh, Roy Rage, is mad about this whole in 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 uh, invasion of uh, capitalism with all these all these things that are arriving. Uh, Travolta is uh, doing more dance lessons down at the club. He makes a soul oh, yeah. train reference, which uh, I don't know how that was, ju- how that was supposed to be funny again. Yeah, and if you Russian, make a black, if you make a black reference to a black character, it's hilarious. Oh, right. I love how when, um, and the guy, the guy's name is uh, uh, Nathan actually, uh, but when Nathan and uh, Nathan Kelly Cole. Preston, the day well, they call him that at first. And then he's like, yeah. Oh, like wah, a popular wah. singer. But uh, Nate is dancing with um, uh, Kelly Preston, and I yep. love how Travolta comes over because I expected him to be like, "May I cut in?" But he just awkwardly dances with them. <laughs> it's like, like he clearly is dancing with her, but they're all just kind of dancing around each other, and it's like, wait a second, so the director forgot the uh, forgot the direction here. I would have loved if at the if at the end it just ends in a shot of them all three in bed together. <laughs> well, no, but it does have something almost as funny is that we soon after this cut to. Um, Travolta and Ari Gross making out with their respective ladies and the other two guys just sitting there watching them. I was really hoping that those two guys were going to like just start making out. <laughs> right. Or just, you know, or just jerking it. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, this, it, you know what, Galen? Fuck, at least that would be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a big uh, a big rally of trucks and cars arrives, so that's a scary mm-hmm. thing to see in 2022. Well, they all they're bum, they're, bum, they're, at the, they're actually we you also ran past the fact they're at the beach. They're which at is the beach, apparently the forbidden the, beach. That's the forbidden zone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Do you think it's the beach from old? <laughs> it must be. <laughs> that's why. It's, uh, yeah, that's how all the babushkas yeah. in the in Russia. Oh, babe, I was beautiful two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and all these people show up and travolta's trying to teach them how to how to the guys how to seduce ladies by being creepy but being subtly creepy not <laughs> not overbearingly creepy um but they they can't they can't stop hooting and hollering nope <laughs> and then the old guys i think the joke is that the old guys are all pros at this game and they can oh, yeah. do that move with, they, with it. they look like a couple of dudes in a pepsi commercial from the 80s yeah I, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the one where the the old people uh, got the uh, the got the Pepsi at their old retirement home, and the the frat house got the Coke and like the Coca Cola, and yeah, the it's frat house. 80s, so right, and that's why I had to clarify. The frat house is playing bingo while um, everybody at the old folks' home is being hip and happening and and with the styles. And so much so, it's there's a, little, a granny, uh, and a the twist. granny and the ad goes. Twisty. I really, I really more prefer rap to rock. It's a little twist. It's a little, little, little yeah, a little, we'll turn the tables. <laughs> um, we uh, as this all, as all, everyone's having a good time. Everyone's happy. We're all okay. laughing. This movie's hilarious. Uh, Reverend um, uh, Roy Rage shows up, or Father Roy Rage. Sorry, they're gonna bomb the beach. He's he's literally got like a goofy like cartoon time bomb thing. <laughs> and he even describes it as so bunch yeah. of dynamite sticks tied together. <laughs> he sets it up underneath the guy's car and he gets out of there. And then at that point they decide to go on a beer run. I don't know how much time he set this for, but anyway they go on a beer run and they get out to take a piss. And of course that's when the car blows up. Car also, Louie. also. I got to say the the priest when I found out he was a Canadian actor I was the least surprised ever because his Canadian accent is so noticeable when he speaks in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> least believable Russian. A, a ever. lot of his a lot of his character work were people who were from like, you know, the Midwest. <laughs> That's yeah. how the Canadian accent blends with it. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, um, they just figured, you know, like eh, Canadian Midwest, you know, you'll just meet somewhere in the middle. And so <laughs> They, they, this is where they start wandering through the woods, isn't it? Yeah, they start wandering through the woods. They start hearing, they start, uh, they see some Russian writing. Well, first they hear some woman yelling in Russian, and and Travolta is like, ah, no, no, that's nothing. That's just some kinky Nebraska thing. Uh, Bonnie said the made those sounds last night when I popped her hood. 
It means they had sex, kids. Right. Mm-hmm. You get it? Because that's another slang I have never heard. Popter uh, hood? No. Nope. Yeah, popter say. hood. Yeah. Bean juice and. Uh, bean juice, popter hood. And what was the other one? Oh, the ex- exchange of body parts. <laughs> exchange of yeah. body parts. Weird. Maybe a, guys, maybe a Russian really did write this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they talk, yes? <laughs> yes. yes. You pop the hood in the, uh, with the body parts and the beans. They exchange juice. of body parts. <laughs> Vlad, I think it's a body fluids. That's stupid, it, Dimitri. It is okay. Someone, he gave me body parts. I take all of them with the beans. Let's, let's, let's use body parts because that is my favorite Jeff Fahey movie. Body parts. Yeah. He has other <laughs> movies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, they they and then they start to clue in though because they see a building with Russian writing on it. Although Travolta is still kind of in denial, uh, not just a river in Egypt. And he, wow. <laughs> yeah, at least it was a joke. Um, hey. There's like dogs everywhere and like people speaking in Russian. And then they see Smitty and they're like, ah, oh, drag. Um, and uh, and they both decide, well, shit, we better go see our respective ladies because clearly they're too in love with us to do anything. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. We're oh, studs. God. And we love no will way. find a way. Yeah, yeah there's no way uh, that right. like, they would turn on us. No. And I guess I guess the joke here is that when Travolta goes to Kelly Preston, as, right away she takes out a gun. You know, she's like, I'm going to blow your brains out. But then she shoots the camera and she says, yes, of course, I'm in love with you. And then Ari Gross's girl is like, it, it reports them right away. Yeah, which she you think it's gonna be? Hard. Yeah, you would we, think. You right. think it's gonna be yeah. the opposite, and I guess that's the bit. That's the funny bit. Mm-hmm. That's good. It kind of <laughs> Ari Gross kind of gets a raw deal because that girl never comes back. She's just like she literally turns on him, and then that's it for her. <laughs> that's that that was. Because she's promoted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was a that was a real that, that was that was that was a, that was a real uh, it was a real blow it was a real blow for me. Yeah, he gets a real chasing Amy ending. He doesn't get the girl. Yeah, no. it was rough. Yeah. Yeah. And then he meets her years later at a comic book convention. It's really awkward, and she's got her mm-hmm. roommate there. Right. And... Yeah. Finger cups. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just stuff from the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, hey, it, at least at least those are jokes. I, I I I mean I can't I can't say anything about it. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So our boys are in a gulag. Yep, they're in the prison. Um, they're 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 sad, <laughs> obviously, because they're in prison. And then the captain is just bursts through the wall. <laughs> yep, he's breaking out. <laughs> Breaks through the wall and uh, and he assumes that this is some sort of like military compound that is just like collecting all these like American products. And they're like, Nah, dude, we figured out this is a spy school because again, they need to tell us as the audience, even though we've known from literally minute four, yeah, what's going on. Then they go full communist. The town goes full communist because everything starts being confiscated. Shower cords are snipped for some yes. reason. <laughs> That was weird. You must yeah. take traditional Russian bath. <laughs> yeah, and for some reason there's no water going through it, but when they they cut the shower cord, water just squirts out of it, and I'm, I'm like, the tap's not on. <laughs> Why would that happen? And and Smitty is like begging, like, please don't put these people through, like, you know, in, in a normal Moscow town, these people have grown up in this town, they're used to the American way, they can't just suddenly go to like being a Soviet, like it'll. You know, it'll mess them up or whatever. Um, so they decide to have this like town hall meeting. They bring Travolta and Ari Gross there, this and they're like, they they basically insane. tell them like, you have to give like an anti-America speech, prove that you you you've now defected and you you want to be Russians. But Travolta yeah. is such a goddamn patriot. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't, can't do, do it. it. I can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. I mean, are you telling me you can't say anything negative now, Galen? As an American. If your yes. life was on the line and they were like, can you say like five bad things about America? Do you think you could pull it off? <laughs> Even if I didn't mean it, I could. Yeah, I could probably well, I could probably do that. Right I can I can I, can say, like, I can say about like I can say about like 12, 12 or 15 genuinely. I could uh, even <laughs> and without w- without that even being said, I could probably fake about five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, I Trouble. mean, I, I mean, these these days, it's mm. a lot easier that it's even easier to say to say to say five bad things about America, and and then there's the the other quote unquote joke of when I, uh, um, Ari Gross says dwirled domination. What? That's a joke. But that was don't you get it? That's a joke. Because he said the words wrong. Yep. It's, 
<laughs> yeah, because it's so awkward. He says dwarled domination. domination. And then Travolta calls him on it and he says, oh, I said that? Oh, hilarity. What? You, and you don't reference the joke you just made. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Larry David guest wrote this, just this little <laughs> tiny bit of dialogue. Right. <laughs> You said I feel like you said the world domination. What this what this movie was what this movie was missing was a la, was a laugh track. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we know where the jokes are. Right. So otherwise, exactly. I have no idea. It's like when you watch one of those videos on YouTube where they show a sitcom without the laugh track, and you're like, "This is grim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's nothing funny here." Um. So yeah, again, of course, they don't want to do the speech, and the town because people it's start. Because it's the eighties, man, and. If there was one decade that I could think of that was super duper raw raw USA or at least where that started, 80s, 80s all the way, baby. Right on the edge of Reagan's America, right on yep. the right at the beginning of Bush's America. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was a wild time uh, to be uh, one years old for me. <laughs> um, I, 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 I I have tangible memories for at least half of the decade. <laughs> Um, but they, yeah, they get taken away. The townspeople start standing up for them though. And they're like, you know, no one's going to be shot today. And, but, but sure enough, Brian Doyle Murray, uh, shoots Smitty in the shoulder, but thankfully he is saved by a, uh, a, a Walkman tape. Got him in the Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the ZZ top. He says, um, everyone else is, uh, subdued and arrested except for, uh, father Roy rage manages to escape out the back door on a bicycle. On a bicycle, built for hit one. A yeah. um, bunch of agents show up in town. Uh, I think th- I thought this part was okay. Now I thought this part was kind of funny. At first I was like, oh really? They're making that joke. But like Kelly Preston is like shooting at them. Travolta grabs the gun and says, "This is a man's job." And then immediately does like the worst, like terrible job shooting. Oh yeah, he has like everyone. no control from the kickback on the AK-47. Again, maybe I'm just like grateful that there was there. It seemed to have the fabric of a joke, and I'm just like, hey, that was a joke. I think <laughs> they they do blow up a communication satellite. They because, do because yeah, because the reason yeah. the reason being is that now that everything has uh, gone south on this uh, you know fake American town in Russia, their their plan is to radio back to the Kremlin and have them like carpet bomb the 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 village. Yep. Um, the other plan that's going on is that the captain is traveling with Ari, who's dressed up like an old woman. Um, <laughs> what's their thing? At t- oh, they're trying to get to the plane, right? And he says, you must be hung like a uh, like Russian woman. So he just starts stuffing his boobs to make him look more like a, an old babushka because he's got like the, the, the I don't know, the hat, the handkerchief, yeah. the kerchief on the head and like the old frumpy Russian dress. And it's just packed to the gills. See, you get it because old Russian women are are buxomous. It's hilarious. Buxomous I, is the word, yeah. So uh, now their plan is to is to is to defect the entire town to America. Yes, the the captain. Uh, so they all get on the plane. Um, the captain at one point throws a wrench at one of the guys to stop him from shooting at them. Um, they accidentally take off at one point. Hilarious. Because he so has to get out hijinks. on the wing to to slam the. Uh, the flaps on the wing so they can actually get altitude to take off. And then, and then as they take off and they get away, it looks like uh, father Royd rage is going to be the one that they pin the blame on back in, uh, back in Moscow or back in yes. Russia, but they go back to New York. They go to a nightclub. We get a long scene where Travolta sees everyone walk by him mm. and there's no jokes. He's just like saying, Hey to everyone. Yep. Um, and then he's like, you know what? I, I don't I don't think this is where they're they're gonna be happy and they go to they take everyone to Nebraska and to which I noted I thought they loved these people. Nathan is right. vehemently anti Nebraska. Not 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 not, not, not a uh, happening hub of uh, urban activity. Well, that's the whole thing, right? They want them to be somewhere where it's just like where they where they came from. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like they could have stayed in New York because they were clearly enjoying all the the accoutrement. Uh, mm-hmm. of modern uh, 80s city living. Mm-hmm. We don't really even get closure on, like, if Travolta stuck with uh, Kelly Preston either. Like, the, her character just kind of isn't really there anymore. Like, she's on the plane. We see her on the plane, and then we see the joke is just like, I want to have all these babies. And we, the joke is that he he's gone when she looks back, and he's, like, driving the fuel truck out of the way or whatever. But, like, when, they ba- when they're back in New York, I don't even really think we see her again. 
Nope, she might get so lost, lost in the in the mix in translation. Of all the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's lost her in translation and, uh, from uh, uh, American oh, Russian to American. It's a remake American. with it's a remake with her and Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> <laughs> that I would watch. <laughs> I would watch that. Um, but yeah, so they take the Nebraska and everyone's happy and uh, that's that's the experts, folks. End credits to the song Hometown USA. Yeah. By yeah. some guy and the somebodies. <laughs> right. So guys, I know you could tell already by our, uh, our our upbeat tempo that we had a great time with this movie. So I will go oh, around yeah. the horn and and ask for everyone's opinion. So Galen, I'll start with you. Um, is this movie worth a watch? A uh, drunk watch with friends? Would you attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid it like the plague? You know, this is it's a tough one because uh, it's not fun. But it's also not like terrible enough to be like, oh my god, uh, like oh my god, this was painful. This isn't like North bad. It's just, it's just a bummer. I mean, I don't know. Like, you can, uh, you know, you can put this on in the background and you know, throw back a few. And if you know, if you just end up like, I don't know, like fingering someone on the couch instead, like that's fine too. So, so what's that category? That, that took a turn. <laughs> Uh, and, and, um, uh, f- fingering with digital friends? penetration with friends, <laughs> fingering with friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, oh. essentially it pretty much, uh, equal to the, the attempt head trauma category. Sure. Some people I know can get some, get some serious head trauma while fingering. So you got to start vetting these guests, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan, what say you? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the head trauma. Um, it's, it's not as Galen eloquently put as so painful that I, I have a terrible, terrible time, but I feel that if I attempted a drunk watch with friends, I would lose a couple of friends. <laughs> so we're going to go, yeah, attempt head trauma to forget. I I'm, I'm also going to say attempt head trauma, but I'm going to say that it's not head trauma that for it's... everybody. Yeah, it's not like it's not a fun movie to watch, but no. it's it's kind of fascinating how not funny it is, like how it's barely a comedy and how you could tell someone to watch it and say this is a drama about Moscow and they would probably believe you. It's like like you said, it's filled with just bad improv and a lot and the people that are funny aren't really given funny things to do too. like Brian Doyle Murray is never given like a hilarious scene to do like Charles Martin no, he, Smith is pretty funny. He's not really given anything funny to do. He plays a straight the entire time and, yeah. and he, he's not in any situations where a straight man would be funny at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Travolta, Travolta is great. Uh, Ari Gross is kind of, I mean, I like, I've liked Ari Gross in some things here. He's just kind of a big nothing. Yeah. And I didn't even know who he was. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people. I don't even know if Ari Gross knows who Ari Gross is. <laughs> Interestingly enough, uh, the night after I watched this, I was watching an episode of Criminal Minds, and he was the he was like the guest murderer. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's also the um the guy the the guy in the cold open in um, Minority Report. I knew he was in it. I just didn't know what role he played. So he's in yeah, the he's okay. the guy in the beginning who's like gonna kill his wife, and then they're like, "You're gonna kill your wife in two minutes," and he's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> it's an underrated movie, by the way. Everyone should watch Minority Report. I love that. Movie. No one's ever heard of it. <laughs> no, yeah, no one's ever heard of that Steven Spielberg film. Nope. Um, With Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah. And Colin Farrell. Mm. Um, all right, well, guys, we are gonna take a brief break and listen to some. Uh, don't know if he's gonna do that. And uh, oh, we're gonna wow. listen to some, some ad reads, some some sponsors, and we will be right back. What were they thinking? And we're back. Yes, we're back. back we again. are back from commercials. Um, Nathan, it's it's time for the low haiku. Would you mind explaining to the folks what the low haiku is all about? Yes, the um the low haiku uh, is is seventeen eloquent syllables uh, used to describe the movie we've well, been talking about for you know an hour and a half or so. And uh, as uh, 
as as our guest, Galen. Um, hmm. I do invite you to, uh, to to grace us with your your low haiku first. Thank you so much. It is an absolute pleasure, and I will begin now. Fish out of water. Travolta's hair is its own character. No thanks. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Nathan, would you like to read your haiku? Yes, yes, I have mine prepared here. <clears throat> the Cold War, so hot. The Americans? What's that? JK, this is trash. Mm. Thank, mm. You. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that was good. That was real good. <clears throat> okay, I'll uh, read my haiku. Take us <clears throat> out, Brendan. Only thing that works, the only thing that makes sense, Doyle Murray, Russian. Very good. Very good. Makes a very, very good Let's point about up. the uh, the movie statement, if you will. Point, mm -hmm. The poignancy was uh, palpable. Okay. Don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody knows that the bird is a word. Is that a bird? Somebody hit him on the side. <laughs> Bird. <laughs> oh well guys um we we talked about the experts uh nobody sure has did. but we did <laughs> um <laughs> but what you know you can listen to our opinions but what do we often uh always tend to say around here nathan well, well we usually uh say to folks don't take a word for us That's right. That's what we say. Don't take our word for it. Although, Nathan, um, I feel like uh, all the critics were packed into their seats. They all got excited to see this movie. What did they what did they think of it? Uh, not not a one saw it uh, or, or at least dignified it with a review. Uh, it is not applicable on the tomato meter and there are zero, zero critic reviews uh, listed. But. If you liked this. Oh, wait. Well, well hold on. Before you tell me that, I oh, want to know okay. if the audience saw this movie. Oh, all right. Well, the audience, I'm assuming out of some, I'm, I'm assuming out of some sort of devotion to Scientology, uh, gave it 29%. Okay. So a third of the 10 people that saw this. 250 it. plus ratings. Yeah, but 10 people saw it. <laughs> One of them is from Elron H. <laughs> Wait, that's M. too obvious. Uh, L. R. Hubbard. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, and and yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Nathan. No, what I, might I also I, like if I liked this movie somehow? In fairness, I did jump ahead. Uh, if you did like this, you might like Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. No. The Bad News Bears in Breaking Training. Hmm. Warriors of Virtue. One of the worst movies ever made, yes. I, I, I'm apparently told that we should have done this movie a while ago, apparently. We, we, oh, Warriors of Virtue? We will. Yeah. We will one day. Uh, the Adventures of Pinocchio. No, uh, thank you. Walter Matthau and no. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, no, no, no uh, Martin, La Martin Landau. Oh, it's Martin Landau. Landau Sorry, yeah. Martin Landau oh, and Jonathan love you know, Walter Thomas. Matthau was in it. <laughs> Martin Landau, Walter Matthau. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of sounds, sounds like. Uh, it's yeah. the Athau, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, uh, and finally, First Dog. Sure. We've all seen that. It's got a higher audience rating, but the same critical rating. Oh, I just want to let you know, this is this is not super important, but it might become important when you hear this. First Dog stars Eric Roberts, Tiny Lister, Dick Van Patten, and Joe Estevez. Jeez, Which one? Critical reviews. Uh, first Dog. <laughs> first Dog. Yeah. Is that like a, so it's like a presidential dog? Yes. Um, Probably. I don't know. It, it looks kind of... I don't, I don't know. Maybe the one day. The wacky world where a dog became president. <laughs> well, oh, there's nothing oh, right, in the, yeah. there's nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't become president. <laughs> I feel good. Or if it was shot in the 90s. Do 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 do. <laughs> dog yeah. dog 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 is president. Dog dog dog. <laughs> now do the dance I taught you. <laughs> good All job, right. dog. 
Well, no critic reviews to speak of, so I guess I'll just start with the audience reviews here. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, a doozy. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Urania S. Uh, <laughs> so there there you go. Um, it starts off with... Uh, <clears throat> okay. I just read about Naomi Wolf and vaccine conspiracies where she says they have tech with nanoparticles to make you travel back in time. It's just like the wolves to take out their own industry, television, radio, film, books. These are all time machines. How can you work for a time machine and be fearful of it? I guess this describes the human condition. In any event, this is a great time machine that has the 80s look at the 50s. And now we get to travel there from the 2020s. John Travolta is at his vampiric best in this one. Why? He also has a long, awkward dance with his wife, R.I.P. This was one that I loved oh, wow. as a kid, and it still holds up in the time machine of now, thanks to the comedic direction of Dave Thomas, known for Strange Brew, just in case you didn't know. I don't think it ever really resolved why Russia built a time capsule of 50s America to train spies in 80s Russia, but it's a cute film with a very happy ending. Five stars. This person doesn't remember what the Cold War was, I guess. That's yeah, so much. I, I, that was that was terrifying to even read. That was, it, it definitely had some twists and turns, I'll tell you that. Yeah. A lot of these reviews go on take you on a little journey. I mean, yeah. I think it's one of those where, yeah, if you if uh, if you like this film, it uh, it, it strikes up some uh, some emotions and it goes deep. <laughs> well, it, the same. I mean, obviously that can be said about uh, super reviewer. Ampersand hashtag nine eight two nine semicolon ampersand number symbol seven four five semicolon ampersand hashtag four three five semicolon and number symbol one zero four eight semicolon ampersand hashtag one zero four eight semicolon ampersand to have this to say. Ah, my favorite. The experts supposed to be in bold because they tried to use code for some reason in this review. The Experts is a silly bad film, but I can't help but kind of love it. I mean, the plot alone is laughable. The acting is so cheesy, and the dance scene between Travolta and Preston is something to be seen. I have never laughed so hard while cringing at the same time. I love the music, and the clothes are fantastic. The big teased hair and odd mismatched clothing really puts you back in that era. If for If you're in the mood for a silly film that you can just have fun with then this would be a perfect film for you. I would probably see this again just for a good laugh. Two and a half out of stars. Okay. Wow. It seems low for that glowing review. Right? (laughs) Okay. So this one goes on a little bit of a journey. It's, um, I don't know how you say this, but it's all, um, all one word. This is off of, uh, IMDB because yeah, that's how you say it. IMDB. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you say. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I wasn't sure. Um, Ken Demic, or I don't know how you how you do it. It's all one word. It's a Ken Demic. It's it's the it's a Ken Demic. Yeah, we've been we're, we've been the Ken Demic for the last two years. Um, too too many Ken Jong movies are infecting yeah. the nation. Ah yeah yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> this begins with um this is under the subject matter um subject line uh one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh boy. I'm sorry, but this is simply one of the greatest movies ever. Travolta is so cheap that it warrants re-release in theaters across the globe. It's kind of weird. Um, Charles Martin Smith, as he did in the classic Starman, single-handedly saves the film and along with Travolta makes this movie a modern classic. It'd be a travesty if I didn't mention the gorgeous Kelly Preston in quotes, which is weird, um, uh, fulfilling a very hot Jennifer Aniston-ish from Leprechaun role. Her shimmering ramen noodle mall hair gives me goosebumps even as I type this. So with all of this said, it is only fair to submit the experts as one of the great films of the 20th century up there with Karate Kid 3 and Troll 2. Oh... (laughs) Oh yeah, it takes you on a journey, and, it, yeah, and then it just shamblons you at the end. Vince yeah. Russo swerved us at the end. Yep. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Uh, okay. Um, this is a, a pretty pretty straightforward, simple one. It's from Andre O. Um, and he simply says, review will be written when slash if rewatched. Probability zero. First viewing December twenty second, nineteen ninety six. One star. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> okay. 
well, my next one comes from uh, James L. And uh, he apparently knows the director on a first name basis because he writes, oh, Dave, what have you done? <laughs> Kelly Preston and John Travolta before they were married. Two out of stars. <laughs> Wonderful. X- um. Um, the other the other one was was 10 out of 10 stars, by the way. Oh, of um, course. Of course. Yeah. Right up there with Troll 2. Um, <sighs> this is only seven out of stars. But okay. um, and uh, it's, it's, it, um, it has the title. It was fun. This is one of those silly movies that you can always that you can enjoy without too much concentration. I've always thought that Ari Gross is underrecognized. So that's part of my reason for liking this. OK, uh, I thought it was kind of fun, light and fluffy. Maybe you shouldn't seek it out, but if it shows up on TBS one night, try it. You may just like it. It appeals to the, to the fantasist in me. Okay. Um, it requires the same suspension of disbelief that made Footloose such a hit. I disagree. Um, the entire premise is ridiculous, but who cares? This is the reason people see movies. Pure entertainment. No education. No controversy. Nothing to discuss later. Just get comfy on the couch with a snack and relax for 90 minutes or so. Because yeah, who wants to exercise their brain, right? Yeah. No. No. No education. Yeah. No social like, hey, commentary whatsoever. Am I? Yeah. Despite the fact that this thing is clearly trying am to make I a social learn commentary shit about America. No. <laughs> That's why I only watch mo- those uh, Friedberg Seltzer movies. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. This was that one was by uh, by the the uh, immortal reviewer Maga 2007. Uh, this is from IMDb, uh, written by JFK Mart. <laughs> Just love that name. That JFK is my Mart. that's my punk rock name. Uh, that that'd be the name. I mean, my punk name in my next punk band. JF Kmart. Kmart sells guns too. I'm just saying. JF Kmart dash nine six seven eight two said, "I saw this movie when it came out in January of 1989. I loved the wacky comedy and especially the awesome dance sequence between Kelly Preston and Travolta. All the characters are memorable and very unique. I loved it so much. I tried to go back to my local theater to watch it again, but don't. It wasn't there. Paramount really pulled it fast." If nothing else, watch the badass with two dollar signs instead of S's uh, dance sequence just to see Kelly Preston bend over right to camera. Ari Gross's love interest, Deborah Foreman, was is equally enchanting. Even though she wasn't given many lines, she conveyed a sweet sincerity with just her eyes. That's real charisma, kiddo. Winky face. Why can't I get a Blu-ray of this? I don't think they ever released it on DVD. Total (laughs) bummer. Ten out of ten. Oh my god! Oh boy! <laughs> this, uh, ha- this has an audience. This I mean, yeah, this has yeah. a, a particular niche audience for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, my last one comes from Sean B, uh, and I'm assuming that's uh, Sean Bean, even though it's spelled differently. He says they kept talking about my juice. <laughs> he says, saw this at 2 a.m. one morning when I was young and swore I'd had a weird dream about some weird Travolta flick. Hilarious and saddened when I found out it was real. (laughs) And that I hadn't died in this movie. Two out of stars. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) Also, better than Silent Hill Revelations. (laughs) Yeah, oh boy. This is is from um, Lainey's Dad. In oh, 2004. No. So, so Bill late, Lewis. Yeah. What? Bill Lewis. I guess. Yeah. Because you don't want you guys watch the Goldbergs. Laney Lewis, her dad's Bill. Bill Lewis. Oh. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, good. Yeah. So Laney's dad calls this one funny but stupid. This movie is good, um, and albeit stupid, and it features the real life hookup of Kelly Preston and John Travolta. <laughs> um. Weird. <laughs> Hookup. Not okay. on screen. I mean, gross. I mean, I mean well, that that that. But the that other, the other movie hookup. that I watched, um, it did. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have this movie on VHS because I don't think it is even released on DVD yet. Boy, people are just clamoring for that DVD. Um, it sits on my shelf 364 days a year, but about once a year, it gets pulled off and watched. If you like this movie, you probably like. The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, Basketball, and most of Kevin Smith's movies. 
I like Rotten those Tomatoes. movies. I did not like this movie. <laughs> yeah. What? What the fuck? Okay. Um. It is funny to see what was hip in the late '80s. Travolta's mm. snakeskin cowboy boats with the stainless steel tip. Weird uh, attention to detail. Um. And Gross's bandana and vanilla ice pants. And need we forget in all caps? Mullets galore and greasy mullets at that. No real chemistry between the two main stars, although laughably Gross was a star on the rise here. He was not. And Travolta's career hadn't hit its second wind yet. Yep. Oh, that's what, it. And what's where it ends? What did he give it? Uh, there was there were no stars given. Oh wow. Oh. He refuses to give in to the system. Nope. Yeah, tidbit. he's just he just he just came here to talk about the mullets. It actually an interesting tidbit. My it's a uh, tidbit that's my, interesting. Exactly. Uh, my cousin worked at Mullets Galore back in the eighties. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah the, sell... the, the the canada branch the, the right. ontario branch i it well is... i mean i'm assuming it's the home the home the the hometown and headquarters of because i can't think of a more canadian hairdo than the mullet yeah okay. and they didn't exactly. they didn't sell they didn't sell wigs either yeah so i mean it's not out. it's called hockey hair for a reason i know right <laughs> All right, well there you go. We we've heard from us. We've heard from the 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 critics and well, not really. We've heard from the audience. No, um, yeah. not no critics saw this film. Not a single critic. Nope. Um, but that that is the experts. So um, now I guess we come to the point of the show where we get to talk about stuff that we actually do like. Uh, the dance sensation that's sweeping the nation. The what you watching? Everybody's doing the what you watching, bud. Uh, oh, so yeah. yeah, get that theme going. So, okay, we need a theme for this segment, I think. You really so, do need a what? Yeah, a what you yeah. watching, bud? What you watching, bud? I don't know what you watching, bud. I'll tell you so. Do 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 do. Someone remix that, please. Oh no, that we're using that. We're using that. Brendan just got cut out of the episode. That's why we didn't say a word while you were doing it. We tricked you into making a theme for us. Hey, so we got I, Taylor. I, I, yeah. <laughs> hey Taylor, can you just play your guitar for no reason at all? We're just gonna sit back and listen in silence and not yeah, hit sure. record. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So. So. Uh, so, Galen, I'll start with you since you are our guest. Um, what? Uh, what you? What you? What you watching, bud? Let's see. What? Did, uh, yeah. Well, you know the. Um, it's a beautiful thing. The. Um, you know the theaters are open again. Um, I, I haven't. Uh, you know. The, you know. We. They. You know. As, at the recording of this episode, they just announced all of the. Um, the. The. The Oscar noms. Um, I. I've been a little behind. I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to confess. But um, I did. I did really enjoy um, Licorice Pizza. I've seen that uh, several times. If you're a. Uh, if you're a PTA head, um, I think this one is. Um, it's I, it's a it's a really interesting entry in his oeuvre, um, and um, I kind of a throwback to his um, kind of early um, San Fernando Valley uh, fables. Uh, but uh, this one it's a it's it's a it's a lot of fun. Um, I really like that one um, quite a bit. And um, on the TV side, um, I just um, I was watching. Um, uh, crashing with Pete Holmes. Uh, I, I finally got on that on that bandwagon, and um, Pete Pete Holmes from You Made It Weird uh, is uh, you know I I love that kind of um, the, the you know I think we're kind of at the end of you know I'm a comedian and life sucks, but mm-hmm. I think this is it's a good way to kind of like um, you know to kind of send that off. So uh, so yeah, baby. All right, that's Hollywood, baby. That's Hollywood, baby. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Uh, what you watching, bud? Uh, well, I, uh, this past, this past week, I, I took time out to watch, uh, the new Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah. Um, got it on home rental. I was, I had a really fun time watching it. I, I thought they, uh, uh, they treated all the originating characters with, uh, uh, some sweetness, but it wasn't, it wasn't packed to the gills necessarily with fan service in a, like an obscene or obnoxious way. Um, the only, my only thing that kind of I felt was kind of a drawback is that they didn't take the opportunity to really stick it to the, the incels and make the uh, Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig one canon by including their characters in some way, shape or form. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. 
I was really bummed out when they, uh, I get that it also didn't do like amazing at the box office, but I was also really bummed out when they announced that that was kind of the end of that. Mm. But I think that's why uh, subconsciously I've been avoiding the movie, not because this movie, not because I think it's going to be bad or anything, but I'm just like, I'm still, I'm still a bit miffed about that, but I, I, I will check that out at some point. Ivan Reitman, RIP. Yeah, yes. that's, that's uh, very sad. Did you watch before or after RIP? Uh, before. Okay. And then, wow. I think, I, I think, I, I think you watching the film, um, might have killed he, him. Might have killed him. Uh. I had well, nothing but are, good things are, to say about it. People are I don't know. Us. I, maybe are, he was just like, "Hey, you know, or I got Nathan I saw it, see my like, movie. I can, I, I'm ready I can to go. rest in peace now. I yes. can rest people, finally." Listen, Galen. People are blaming us for Meat Love's death. So you, 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 you were, you were at that anti-vax party. Um, with, well, you know with, what? It, interestingly Meat enough, we've been blamed for Meat Love's death and also the the trucker convoy in Canada <laughs> because we covered. <laughs> Black Dog that week. So. That guy that got the whole gamut. Yeah, there. Hey, we got everything. We were we were, <laughs> we were psychics that week. Um. Okay. So what I've been watching, bud. Well, I uh this this was a little while ago, but I did want to kind of recommend it and do a little shout out. It's also a recent movie, um, that I saw in theaters a few months ago, and it was uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, Nightmare Alley, which yeah. is a, rem- a remake of a of an older uh, film noir. Um, this is, uh, not really what you'd, ex- and it wasn't really what I expected. Like I didn't really know what it was going in, but mm. it's not a monster movie. Number one. So that may, that may surprise people from Del Toro. Um, <laughs> it is very much in the realm of film noir. It is, um, it, I mean, you know, it's dark and, and creepy at times, but it's certainly not, um, like a lot of his, mo- like a lot of his movies very much in his style. But anyway, mm. Nightmare Alley is great. Bradley Cooper is great in it. And, uh, everybody, um, yeah, the whole cast. It's wonderful. And uh, if you like Del Toro movies, I'm sure you'll love it. Nightmare Alley. Cool. Woo! We did it. Um, Nathan, is uh, is Montrose there to say a few words? Yes, I am. Just one second, I'll get him. Okay. Oh, please. <laughs> Hello! It's your good friend Montrose Minkington III here. Uh, and I would just, just like to say, uh, uh, after you're done listening to this this podcast... Um, you can s- head on over to my YouTube channel, Montrose Merkington TV, uh, where you can see I've, I've slowly started getting back into to re- to reviewing the graps, uh, but I, I've taken a turn, a swerve, if you will, uh, into the indie scene, um, as I don't feel paying for the WWE Network is absolutely worth it anymore. Uh, and if you like what you see there, we can be friends on uh, my Facebook uh, group page, uh, Montrose Merkington the Third Esquire and Friends. And you can also tweet at me on your Twitter devices uh, at Montrose the Third. That's the number three RD. Thank you. More later. Thank you, Montrose. You're welcome. Uh, and Galen, 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 oh, Galen, Galen. Me. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for for coming out for coming out here. Uh, you made the drive from California. To I New did Brunswick. all the way to Canada. I um, yeah, I, I passed the state line. Um, yeah, and um, border. Yeah. <laughs> Either one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Entered the like, state of Canada and the state of the confusion. State of Canada. Yeah. The state line, uh, and yeah, and then yeah. into the border of Canada. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming here in your big rig. Um, oh just... yeah, exactly. With my trucker hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Uh, you you may you may also have something you'd like to promote. Oh well, yes. There, I I I would be remiss to um to say yeah we it's not like we did a whole bit about it or anything. No. But, <laughs> no. But I, I have recently been in um, a little show, you might have heard of it, called Book of Boba Fett uh, in a little uh, franchise called Star Wars. Um, and uh, I'm in a couple episodes of that. With uh, it's, Watch, you know, you can see me with all my friends, my close personal friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, um, Mr. Boba Fett um, and uh, Miss Fennec Shand. And, not, not, um, to, not to Mura Morrison, but Boba Fett, the character. No, no, I he... Right. I, he he insisted on being called Boba Fett. Um, oh, don't, oh no! Don't start rumors, Galen. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this starts. <laughs> next yeah, thing yeah, you know, no. he's the next Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. He was a gentleman. He was an absolute gentleman. Uh, yeah, um, I, 
Um, but I think he was very much in character and he, um, he was, he was having like the booming Boba Fett la uh, uh, voice. So, so like, it, like after our take, he would just like turn to, uh, turn to me and go, you made me laugh. <laughs> and it was great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, it was, it, it was great. Um, um, wonderful, you know, having grown up on the movies, you know, wonderful, surreal experience. Very cool. I'm in episodes two and three um, in uh, the city of Mos Espa. Um, and um, I would also be remiss in not mentioning um, a small indie uh, drama comedy. Um, I, I've, I, I have a lovely role in called Moon Manor is uh, coming out um, at the end of February uh, for a small, um, a small theatrical run here in LA. And, um, and then VOD shortly after that. So um, be sure to check out Moon Manor uh, featuring me and lots of cool people like uh, Richard Reilly from Office Space, uh, uh, Deborah Wilson from Mad TV, and uh, Lou Taylor Pucci. So if you're listening to this on the day of its release, um, it'd be, so it'd be March 10th, so you can definitely check that out now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, thanks again, buddy. Yeah. Um, so as we uh, close the show, I'll just mention that you can find us on any podcast app. If you're listening to one right now and you're like, this podcast app doesn't work for my particular tastes, then guess what? You can go to another podcast app and listen to it there because we're on mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, our home base is, uh, of course, Age of Radio. Big time. You can go to ageofradio.org slash what were they thinking and find us there. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram and TikTok uh, at uh, WWTT podcast. Look, look, I think the TikTok thing's getting phased out. I don't use it that much, <laughs> but you can find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, Trying to appeal to the hip youngsters. <sighs> yeah. The only thing I got in common with them is a broken hip. Hey. <laughs> Um, wow, and my ticker don't talk that much these days. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can find you can you can get listen, guys, get yourself a paid to fart shirt. Uh, you can get that on our on our store on uh, T Public and, Red and Redbubble. If you do nothing else, get get paid to fart. Get paid to fart and so pay you can us tell to people fart. What you, what you get paid for? To fart. <laughs> Fart. And during the pandemic, it's really important that people know what you're getting paid for, I think. Right. So. That way they, they don't think you're abusing the CERB. No. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the Patreon. Patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. Sign up and you can uh, you can tell us what to watch. You can, you know, you get extra episodes, all kinds of good stuff. But other than that, Nathan, with that all wrapped up, um, do you have any questions about the experts? And maybe direct them at Galen because he's the expert on this one. All right. Well, I guess, I mean, with a movie uh, where, you know, you're you're talking about the, the Cold War, a big historical thing. And, and with a movie where uh, they're, they're training sleeper agents uh, to be able to blend in with American culture. And, and, and in the movie where uh, John Travolta and, and Kelly Preston make some sandwiches on the dance floor. I just I gotta ask about the fifties. That that's that's their idea of America in the eighties. I what were they thinking? It takes a certain kind of man with a certain reputation to alleviate the cash from a whole entire nation. Take my loose change and build my own space station. I'm a modern Rasputin So contract disputes to some brutes in Labutin At Kaifalum while my boys put the boots in They do they can, can Spasibo! Party like a Russian End of discussion Dance like you got concussion, oh Put a doll inside a doll Party like a Russian Seduction Party like a Russian Have it like an oligarch I got Stalin, Bali and Molly So jolly and I'm always up a trolley So I never 